Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another post fight analysis video. All right, y'all, this is the fight I was looking forward to. Sorry I couldn't do the uh, live stream for this one last night, the round by round, but I had some stuff to do. At least I got in the first two women's fights, uh, but I still watched it. I watched this fight. I watched it again last night when I got home uh, from what I was doing. You know, I watched it again early in the morning, sat down and analyzed it, and my mind has not changed. This fight was not a robbery. I'm tired of people calling these split decisions robberies. I mean, if you feel a fight was close, you know, hey, tell me who you think won. Hey, that's your opinion, right? I got my opinion who I think won. But if it's a close fight, I'm going to tell you it's a close fight. Just because the person, you know, that uh, I was picking didn't win, I'm not going to say it's a robbery. So you got to stop calling these split decisions robberies. You really got to stop calling these close fights robberies. Because, look, again, Lauren Murphy versus JoJo. Did I think JoJo won the fight? Yes, I thought JoJo won the fight. Can I see where she lost the fight? Yes, I can see where she lost the fight. All right. So. Split decision, you know, hey, live with it because Angela Hill in this fight didn't do enough. She wasn't dominant to, to beat Amanda Lemos. Amanda Lemos, she didn't look her best, but she went through the motions to me and she still stayed one up over Angela Hill. Did she look pretty doing it? No, but who looks pretty fighting Angela Hill, all right? So this is not a fight where you're going to say, oh, Amanda Lemos is done or she's exposed or she's overhyped. How many fighters out there besides Randon Marcos and Rose Namajunas look stellar and dominant and just spectacular against Angela Hill? None of them except them two fighters because they got her out of there in, what, the first round, right? So we'll talk about that later, though. It's just one of those situations where I get tired of saying, oh, okay, when the person's not doing this, they're ready to just call it a robbery. Or they're, just call they're ready to say this person doesn't have it. But styles make fights. You had two stand-up fighters. That's why I told you this fight could go any type of way. But I see Lamos winning. Like, Lamos, the possibility of, possibility of her knocking out Angela Hill is very, very low here because of Angela Hill's movement. So I started going knockout, but like I said, I got to go more towards the decision because Angela Hill is very durable. She's not very strong. She's not dominant. <laughs> you know, she's not the best at her game plan, but she's a survivor in there. She is a survivor in there. And that's something that Lamos has never faced before. So check that off of her list. She faced a new new type of style. She faced adversity. She's got stuff to work on, which I'll talk about here at the end of the video. But this was not a robbery. And you got to understand where I see Amanda Lamos winning this fight, which I'll break down right now. I'll break it down, right? First of all, like I said, this was an awkward style. This awkward style test. And I'm not going to lie, this was kind of like a anxious type of test for uh, for, for Lamos. Lamos looked a bit anxious in there. I could tell she was hunting too much. She was hunting for the KO because she said she wanted the KO. So she was kind of anxious. You could see the anxiety in her in, the, in this fight, you know. And like I said, Lamos could do it. She could do it. But it's going to take some technical setup and patience to get Hill out of there. And that's what we got to add to her list. Like, she's got to have patience. And she's got to have more. Um, she's got to have that uh, that relax factor in there for for Amanda Lemos because Hill still, you know, like I said, she's going to still, even though she's you know getting older, she's the older fighter, and she's still going to present a lot of movement and feints that could be a problem. You know, Hill she did put up a good effort in the second round, but again, she just can't step on the gas. She can't secure rounds to win. She expects the judge, judges to be on her side or to get it right, but you can't do that. You can't just you just can't do that. You have to go in there and be dominant. So again, she lost a split decision. Like I said, I think she beat Michelle Waterson and Claudia, but that's that's what I think. But the judge didn't think that. So it's on you to go in there and be dominant and say, OK, what is it that I'm doing wrong? You know, do I got to be more of a point fighter and just, you know, fluster these fighters with, you know, my feather, feather dusters and just be chaotic like Caitlin Chikagan? I put that out there. I say, look, got to be a point fighter if you don't have the power or you got to start sitting on your shots or be a submission artist because the judges are not on your side. They're not on your side. You're always going to have this problem, right? So if you go back and look at the fight, the first round, Lamo, she took the center. Hill, she was doing a nice job of feinting and moving side to side. You know, she wasn't a sitting target. You know, Hill opened up with a nice left hook. And I was like, okay. She backed up Lamo with a good left hook right away, right? That's something new. Lamo, she was missing a lot of punches, but she did land a nice right front kick to the chin in the opening. And I was like, uh-oh, here it comes. That front kick to the chin dropped Angela Hill. And I thought it was over, but Hill, she survived. That ground and pound, she survived that. She gets in the guard, gets some time to recover. Lamos, she was getting a little wild with those swings on the ground, but as soon as they separate, Lamos was able to attempt that guillotine choke. You know, she got that control on the ground again. You know, he'll survive. He'll survive. Back on the feet, Hill, she was swinging some wild shots, missing. So, so was Lamos, but Lamos landed the harder strikes here, the, the better significant strikes. Hill landed a good right hand to the back of Lamos that looked like she wobbled her, but hit her on the back and she just, you know, was kind of knocked off balance. You know, so I don't think she was really hurt because they was like, oh, you know, she hurts Lamos, but it just kind of hit her on the back as she was moving. 
And that's the thing. Lamos was just using a lot of, you know, excess movement here where she should have just been, you know, coming forward and putting the pressure on Hill. Uh, I think Lamos won the round. But Hill, again, she did put up a good fight trying to throw Lamos off with the awkward style. But Lamos, she did land the, mo uh, the she landed the better strikes this round. Second round. He'll open up throwing a lot of airstrikes just out of range. You know, you think she outworking her, but she ain't landing anything. You know, Lamos is landing good single right hands on the inside. Granted, she needs to throw combinations herself, but Hill's missing. Finally, Hill closed in for the clinch, which was smart to take away the power. And so she could land. So Hill, she worked in some nice knees to the body uh, in that clinch. You know, spent the long, you know, along the fence, you know, just putting Lamos there. You know, looked like she was trying to wear her down. Those shots, you know, they were starting to slow Lamos down a bit. And this is the awkwardness that I felt would keep Hill alive. But I think Lamos was not doing a good job of using jabs here. Like, Lamos was not doing a good job of using jabs. She abandoned her jabs. She abandoned the low kicks that she was using the first minute of the first round. And I think Hill, she was just able to put that pressure on and throw Lamos off. You know, uh, the round was anything but dominant. But I had to give this round to Angela Hill. You know, Lamos, she needed to start fighting more at a mid-range. You know, I think Hill got this round with the effective clinch work you know she used that effect, effective clinch work landed some good knees to the body and you know she just outworked her. she just outworked her this round um so it's one and one i had to give her that round it's one and one last round lamo she opened up with some nice low kicks and jabs you know landed another big front kick to the face heel shows that durability i think lamos would have got a ko if she put the one twos together she started putting combinations together and again she throw that doggone jab out there it would have got her that right hand that she wanted throw that right jab out there it would open up some nice kicks to the belly and some nice right hands I, she got to go back and watch somebody like tanisha Tennant because they have similar striking stances and if she would have started throwing more jabs down the pipe knockout would have came i'm sorry knockout would have came she was just spending too much time loading up not keeping a jab in the face he'll caught a he'll caught one of those legs got lamos down more of a slip in the middle it was like a slip in the takedown lamos got back up got the reversal in the back of hill and, and um, she got that clinch, exchanged some knees. Back in the center, Lamos, she's landing the hard singles again, head kicks and right hands. Hill went for the takedown where Lamos bounced right back up. So I can't really score that as like, oh, big takedown. You know, it was a quick takedown, back up in two seconds, less than two seconds. So it wasn't much to score. You know, Lamos, back in the center, she's landing those little, you know, she's landing the right hand. Then, then by the end of the round, she steps in, spinning back elbow from um, Angela Hill, in my opinion, was not really a knockdown. It just kind of caught her in the back. And, you know, she just kind of it was kind of like, you know, just a shove that she ran into. But um, I know a lot of people saw that. and They were like, oh, she got a knockdown and a takedown. No, they were all they were all, like takedown wasn't enough to score. The right hands and the punches of Lamos were much more effective. They were more they were, they were significant. And then that uh, spinning back elbow she ran into. It was not a damaging blow because she bopped right back up. It was just an off balance thing. I gave the round to Lamos. I gave that round to Lamos. I had it two to one for Amanda Lamos. Angela Hill again. Think she was robbed, but this was a close fight. Lamos dealt with an awkward veteran, and she did enough to win. I think she could have let those, if she let those jabs go and set those right hands up, you know, Hill would have been in a different place. You know, Hill is there to be hit. Like, she's not the most, like, she's not the most efficient with her defense. Like, she's not that slick. She just uses her feet a lot and gets those punches off to kind of throw you off, but she's never really, like, moving her head either, you know? So, Hill, in my opinion, she didn't win this. She knows that. She can't be mad especially when you can't put together a dominant performance in, in any single round, in any round. Like, every fight she's had, all 20-some-odd all fights she's had in the UFC, she's never been dominant. And that, that has to tell her something. Like, I have to work on something. Like, I got to start doing something. I got to start being a hell of a lot more effective and efficient with these punches because why am I always losing on these cards? Like, you can't always say, oh, it's because they favor this person. But when you look at a person's style, you got to go back and – Watch your tapes and say, what am I doing wrong? Like Rose, she sits down on her punches. She's a precise, accurate striker, right? That's why she'll win some and lose some here and there. But for the most part, she's winning some now because she went back and said, this is what I'm doing wrong, right? But the fighters that are failing like that, even with their stand-up, they're not taking the time to say, hey, this is, this is something I got to change. You're doing the same thing as you did the last fight and maybe less, right? Like every time I see Angela Hill, she's doing the same thing. She's doing the same thing. It might be agitating to some fighters. It might throw them off, but eventually their style catches up and they wind up winning, you know? So it's just one of the, those things. Did she give Amanda Lamos a test? Yes. Did Amanda Lamos, did, did Amanda Lamos uh, look off in this fight? Did she look a little frustrated with this style? Yes. 
But did she do enough to win? Did she do enough to land those effective strikes in there? Did she still make some adjustments and, you know, fight through the fire of what Angela Hill was bringing? Did she keep calm at times? Yes, she did. Of course, sometimes she didn't, but she still did more than Angela Hill. Angela Hill just still, again, stayed in the same gear of never going in there and trying to close the show because that's what she has to do at this point. I'm just telling you the truth, man. I think Lamos won the first and the third round and Hill won it with her pressure and her knees on the inside in this fight. And that's the thing. Angela Hill's very durable. She is hard to knock out. It's about time you start becoming a dirty boxer or an inside fighter. Stop standing on the outside. You're very strong, very tough. You can take a shot and you surprise people with those little left hooks on the inside. Dirty boxer. You know, look at these fighters like again, like Caitlin Chikag and Rocky Pennington. Look at the damage they do in the in the um in the work rate they put up to really, really baffle these fighters. That's why I said like Rocky Pennington, that's a veteran. Look what she did to somebody like Macy Chase on that I thought had potential. That's what you do. That's what you do. That's how you get your dominance going. But Rocky, but Angela Hill, I mean, she is number twelve, so it's not like we can expect her to really step it up at this point, you know. She's just fighting the same fight all the time. You know, I did a video before. I got talked about her point fighting style. You know, I got to switch it up. I'm just telling you, look, no robbery whatsoever in there. Uh, moving forward, I think um, moving forward, I think that Lamos still presents problems for the top 10. I say that with my chest. I think that styles make fights. And when, it ever, when anyone has ever looked, you know, when has ever, anyone ever looked pretty against Angela Hill again? You know, tell me besides Randon Rose, like. Who looked pretty against her? Like, who really looked stellar in there? Um, Andrade got a unanimous decision, but even Andrade made a blueprint for what Joanna could do, right? So tell me that. Hill, in my opinion, she makes a lot of fighters look off with that style. I just think Lemos needs to work on her pacing and patience, which is another video I'll break this stuff down in because Lemos um, was presented with a different style. She's used to fighters coming forward or just being, you know, in the clinch where she can get to him. But when somebody presents different gears like this, you know, Lamos has to go back and say, I got to be patient. You know, I got to, you know, I got to think about my pacing so I don't gas myself out. I also want to throw in like the fact that she needs to throw at different levels, you know, different rhythms with her punches. You know, you got to be rhythmic with that style. Like, you know, box, you got to bop, 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 bang. You know, you got to hit them with, you know, taps and then you got to come with the banger or you come with two bangers and then the feather shots. You know what I mean? You pity pat. Then you come with those shots, not with power on every shot. That's the problem with Lamo. She's throwing that Louisville slugger with every single, you know, she's throwing that Louisville single with intensity every single time. You know, she never bunts a couple of times and then, you know, goes for that big slammer. You know, she's throwing those big power shots. That's why, you know, the hair is swaying, you know, she's sweating and she's gassing and she's uh, losing it at times. And then Angela Hill's pushing her, you know, you got to be prepared for that whenever you take on the bigger fighters, you know, so pacing is just a big problem i think her precision and accuracy and her technique is still there and I, I like i said i don't think these other fighters really present that type of mobility and um awkwardness like angela hill even though angela hill's on the lower level the higher you go everybody else i think kind of fits what lamos could do styles make fights i'm just saying so if people think oh she can't beat rose hey um angela hill she survived against jessica andrade had her moments what happened to rose like rose in that fight Got a broke nose in the second in the second fight with Jessica Andrade and got slammed on her neck. So Styles make fights, so it's still very possible what she could do. I still think she could give Zhang Wei Li problems and possibly beat Zhang Wei or beat Zhang Wei Li. Let's be real. Um, Lamos again, like I said, got to flick shots out, save the power for the last minute combination, and just break it down. You know, and, and break it down to a science. Got to be broken down to a nice rhythm when she's fighting like that, or she'll gas herself out in the future. Um, I like to see Lamos in another test now. I like to see it in a test. Like, just because Angela Hill made her look like this in a split decision doesn't mean you you step down. You keep moving forward. You move forward. Styles make fights. So I'd like to see her take on the winner of Ebos Waterson or maybe Verna Jandaroba. And none of them fighters fight like uh like Angela Hill. So don't go saying that, oh, they're gonna knock Amanda Lamos out. Amanda just gotta put that patience together and you know, and just fight smarter and be the predator that I know she can be. Uh as for Hill. Like I said, got to be dominant, got to be dominant in these rounds or she'll just keep dealing with these close fights. You know, I thought she beat Claudia and Michelle, but she wasn't putting those fights in her own hands. And, you know, this was another fight where if she wanted to win and she didn't want to walk away saying F the judges again, she needed to start sitting on something. See, every time she's in there, she'll take a break or she'll think, oh, OK, you know, I can step back and admire my work. No, you keep working to the end of the round. You keep working to the end of the round because I 
you know, I, I still think that Amanda Lamos was hitting her with big shots where she had to respect her. You know what I mean? Because if, if she wasn't, she would have tried to walk through her, get this fight to the ground and, and shock Amanda Lamos and even tried to, you know, get that stoppage on the ground. So, hey, we'll talk more, though. This is a big turning fight for the strawweight division because, you know, I know a lot of people would try to say Lamos is a hype train, but not at all. Styles make fights. Close fights are not robberies. Quote me on those. Close fights are not robberies. Split decisions are not robberies. And the past few I've seen in this case, I have not seen a split decision yet where I can say it was robbery except the Macy Barber Miranda fight. OK, I mean, y'all got to go back and do your y'all, y'all real analysis on this fight and say, look, Amanda Lamos had her moments. She didn't look good, but you got to give her credit that she won. But we keep moving forward from here. I still want to see Lamos go up. I still think she has better tools than some of these other fighters out here. You know, it's just it's just those off nights. You know, nobody's ever perfect. Even y'all's favorite fighters are never perfect, right? Combo Breaker 99, let me know what y'all think. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.